Coming to you live from the 2605, deep in the nation's capital. Hey, I'm not live. As I said, coming to you live from the 2605. Please welcome the World According to KP podcast. Yay! God help us all. Hey, welcome back viewers, and welcome to the second podcast um, of The World According to KP. Well, it's been a couple of weeks where I haven't been able to uh, do a podcast. Look, we did record a podcast, but the quality of the audio really sucked, and even though this isn't the best audio quality, it's going to be better than what we recorded. And I've been busy with the photography side of things, so... Um, yeah, I've had not a lot of time to record a podcast. Uh, so, the first subject I want to talk about, and it's in the news every day here in Australia, and um, you know, it's something that really just needs to be addressed. We've got to get this thing sorted out, and that is the same-sex marriage debate. And um, the missus and I did a podcast a couple of weeks ago. That's where the audio sucked. Um, so I'm going to go back over this subject again and hopefully we'll get it right. Okay, so, same-sex marriage. Look, the wife and I continually joke that, you know, why should us normal marriages, why should we be the only ones that are unhappy? Why can't uh, gay people be unhappy as well? It, it's, it, it's a joke that we we have and we we do know plenty of gay people and and couples and you know they they would like to get uh, like to have get married um they bicker and banter just as much as we do um but the thing is you know they love each other so i can't see why this has got to be such a a subject that uh we can't sort of get you know, get sort get organized and we've seen plenty of chop and change on the subject as far as politicians are concerned uh, today the opposition uh, has basically put an end of the idea of having a plebiscite on the issue and I can see why uh, the plebiscite would basically bring in so much hate um, and we would see churches throw some pretty serious money at advertising campaigns for the the no vote. Um, I don't think the people in the yes vote would would have that sort of money to throw around. Um, we'd probably also see people from overseas, like the Westboro Baptist Church, they'd, they'd probably come in and throw millions and millions of dollars at a, a hate advertising campaign. Um, look, if several states in the US can come to an agreement and and sort it all out. Um, if Ireland, they they did go to a plebiscite. If they can sort it out, I can't see why we can't. Um, all we're doing is we're torturing you know, gay couples. Um, and I, I don't care if someone's straight or if they're gay or you know, if they're transgender. You know, uh, it was uh, Lynn Manuel Miranda who wrote. I hate it when I get a mental bank, who wrote Hamilton. And when he went up to receive his, uh, was it a Golden Globe or was it an Emmy Award? He, and this was just after the, the mass shooting in Florida at the uh, gay nightclub. And he said, love is love is love is love. That's it. So, um, a politicians of Australia, Get your ass together. Let's just get this thing sorted. All right. Now, next subject. All right, so we've just had the miniseries Brock on television. And, well, I've got a few thoughts on the uh, on the whole thing. Um, first of all, the production was fantastic. Um, but there are a few things that I think that need to be sort of discussed about. Um, 
there's a disclaimer at the beginning of the show that this is a dramatization and nothing could be further from the truth. Um, I met Peter a few times and Larry Perkins. Um, I've met John Harvey. Um, and not to mention the journalist Bill Tucky, who wrote probably the definitive book on Peter Brock, which was The Rise and Fall of Peter Brock. And he really went into some deep and dark areas in that book. If you can find yourself a copy, grab it, read it. It is fantastic. It's probably one of the best motor racing books you will ever read. Um, there's a lot of the story missing. Um, they did put the Polaroids part of the story together very, very well. And um, all that you saw in the miniseries was, was pretty accurate. Um, the way that Holden shut him down, but it was also Brock's insistence on... Uh, carrying on with the polarizer and, and putting it into vehicles. Um, the part where Larry Perkins finds the polarizer uh, under the bonnet of one of the race cars, that is also in um, Bill Tuggy's book. Um, the 1987 win of Brock, uh, which was his last, the way they put that together, that, that was not correct. He, they did not ban the Texaco Sierras and then hand him the, the, the trophy. That whole scenario took over 12 months, uh, lots of lawyers, uh, before Peter was awarded his ninth and final win. And I think that could have been put together a, a little bit better. Um, anyway, I'm not the director of that show. I didn't write it. I didn't come up with a screenplay. Um, but yeah, one thing that did come through, uh, on Peter himself is he, he believed, he believed in himself, he believed in the polarizer, um, Eric Dalker, the chiropractor that sort of got him into the crystals and all that sort of thing, I think he led Peter astray in a way, uh, and that manipulation of Peter was not really shown well in the TV series. Um, one of the things that was really missing um, was his mentor status. There was no mention of the young drivers that he took under his wing and sort of showed them the ropes of of how the game is actually played and that's with the the press and as well as with the uh the fans and uh, not to mention sponsors um so we all know that you know he sort of caught craig lowndes to be who craig is today and why craig is such a good driver today and so good with the fans and and with the media um one of the things i did also see in the what I thought was really well done in the series was the death sequence I thought that was uh, that was very tasteful the way they uh, showed him sort of dreaming back as a kid and them taking off at the line for the uh, the Targa rally and um, and how the car just went around the corner and bang that was it it was, it was well done um, I'm just reading my notes that I wrote out last night, and my handwriting is shocking. Ah, dear. Um, yeah, it's something else that's missing too, is uh, with Craig Lowndes and with his first bit of success up the mountain, and this is back in '94, and I was actually, I was actually at Bathurst that uh, for that race. Um, I was shooting up there, and I got some great images of the battle between Craig Lowndes and, and John Bow. I've, I've got those, unfortunately, in storage. Uh, yeah, this is something else that happened in the last couple of weeks. Um, for me to try and get those images out of storage is going to be like a weekend's worth of work. Um, I was at the storage unit a couple of uh, 
a couple of weeks ago, and it's another reason why I haven't got around to doing this podcast. I finally sold my Ford race engine, um, and I, it was in storage, and I opened the storage unit, and I just went, holy crap, there is stuff everywhere. It's terrible. Anyway, let's we, we're getting off topic. Let's also go back to uh, the story. Uh, one thing I did think they did well was the recreation of the original Bathurst Main Strait and, and Pit Lane area. Uh, it looks like they've recreated it on some urban farm and it's, it, it, it's spot on. As the years go by, I think they should have shot at Mount Panorama because Mount Panorama did build that new pit lane and that new complex. Uh, that has been around since the uh, late 80s, really. And um, they could have done that. Uh, the other thing that I thought was missing was um, basically the, the signage on some of the cars that, that didn't seem very accurate. And look, I know the government has put a veto on all tobacco advertising, but it, I think it would have told the story better if we could have actually had you know, the, the old Marlboro and Craven Mild signage on some of the cars. And in some of the fan film footage uh, that has been morphed into the the program some of those cars did have their original signage and um, it's quite in interesting how that came about as well um, channel 7 refused to release or give the footage to the production company uh, for them to use and it's their intellectual property uh, it's it's theirs for, for them to do as they see fit um, they've been able to get some of the footage out of um, the ABC from the very early years, which uh, Chevron Publishing has been able to use on their great race tapes for, for many, many years. Um, and if you can get a hold of those uh, DVDs, uh, it might even be available online, they're well worth looking into. You'll, you'll see some of the great moments of that race. Um, really cheesy commentary in the early early years but um, well worth well worth having a look um, there's a couple of other anomalies to some of the uh, sponsorship on Alan Moffat's race suit was incorrect um, I believe the show was showing the race in 1971 where they were racing the XY GT HO and they were running the Dunlop tyres and the Dunlop tyres were absolutely useless in the wet and that lost them the race and in fact the next day they put a full page uh, advertisement in the newspapers um, this is why we lost Bathurst and complaining about the Dunlop Aquajet tyre um, and in some of the early sequence areas there was a mix match of some of the vehicles racing some of those vehicles weren't available be raced at that period of time so um, anyway so that was my thoughts on the on the Peter Brock um, miniseries but um, I think we'll start to wrap it up now but uh, look spring is in the air the temps warming up my strawberries are starting to grow the tomatoes are going nuts um, with all the rain we've just had, with a little bit more heat, I think we're going to be uh, looking okay. So, that's it for today, I suppose. Um, look, if you like my crappy videos and podcasts, look, please hit that like button. Get that subscribe button. It takes you nothing. Um, there's probably more we could talk about today, but I'm, I'm just keeping it pretty short. Um... And I will catch you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up. Hit the play button on your screen to subscribe. See you next time.